Story time. I was a young police officer, fresh out of the academy and eager to make a difference on the streets. I had always dreamed of being a cop, and I was determined to do whatever it took to catch the bad guys and keep the city safe. One night, I was called to the scene of a brutal crime. The victims were brutally attacked, and there were bite marks all over their bodies. At first, I thought it might have been an animal attack, but the teeth marks were unlike anything I had ever seen before. They were jagged and uneven, like nothing any animal I knew of could have made. I told my sergeant that I thought some kind of creature had attacked the victims, but he just laughed and told me I was insane. He said I should forget about it and focus on finding the real perpetrator. But I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more to this crime than met the eye. Feeling unsure of what to think, I decided to return to the crime scene on my own. As I walked through the dark, abandoned house, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. I kept my gun at the ready, unsure of what I might find. As I entered the room where the victims were found, I saw something that chilled me to the bone. There, crouched over one of the corpses, was a creature unlike anything I had ever seen before. It was a crawler, with long, spindly legs and a twisted, distorted body. It was sucking the blood from the corpse, and I could see its razor-sharp teeth glinting in the dim light. Without hesitation, I aimed my gun and fired. But the creature was too fast, and it dodged out of the way. It ran through the window and was gone before I could get off another shot. I ran to the window, but there was no sign of the creature. It had vanished into the night. I sat there, staring out into the darkness, trying to make sense of what I had just seen. I knew that no one would believe me if I told them about the crawler. They would think I was crazy, or worse, that I was covering up my own mistakes. But I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something out there, stalking the streets, preying on the innocent. I knew that I had to do something to stop it, but I didn't know where to start. I couldn't shake the feeling that I had missed my chance to stop the creature, and that it would continue to roam the city, hunting for its next victim. I sat there for hours, lost in thought, trying to come up with a plan. But it was no use, I couldn't think of anything that could stop the creature. And so, I sat there in the darkness, alone, unsure of what the future held. As the night went on, I realized that I couldn't just sit there and do nothing. I had to tell someone about what I had seen, even if no one would believe me. So, I gathered my courage and went to my sergeant and I told him everything. I was prepared to be laughed at, but he just looked at me with a serious face and told me that he would investigate the matter. I was relieved and at the same time, scared. Scared of what the truth might be, scared that the creature might be real and that it would come back for me. From that night on, I was a changed man, haunted by the memory of the crawler and the knowledge that somewhere out there, it was still lurking in the shadows, waiting for its next victim. A friend and I saw something several years back. It was very thin and its skin looked as if it had a full body latex suit on. Very shiny. Bone structure in its face but no eyes or orifices. You could see the ribs. Head was elongated and fingers long and pointy. Had a peculiar looking gait to it. This was late at night and the creature was directly under a security light in my friend's backyard. We had been sitting quietly in his truck. This thing walked up not noticing us. Maybe 15 feet in front of us, directly under the security light. My friend screamed and it jumped and faced us. It then took off towards the woods. We had been gone for a while and just sitting in the driveway chilling before we went in. We had actually pushed the truck to the house because we had ran out of gas right before we got back to his house. We finally got brave enough to run into the house but the door was locked and he didn't have a key because he never locked the house. Then we go around the house to try to get through his bedroom window only to find that it was open. Not only was it open but the screen was wadded up and shredded on the ground. Anyone have any idea what this thing could have been? This was in 1996 or 97. I've never been able to figure it out.
I was driving from Portland to Lincoln City to retrieve my work bag that I had left in Lincoln City over the weekend. I left Portland at 3 a.m. and it only had coffee and donuts to eat. There were not many other cars on the road at all, none that were going in a westerly direction that were within sight of me, and only about two cars passed me between Spirit Mountain Casino and the site where I had my sighting. I was driving about 55 miles per hour and had my bright lights on and it just came over a rise in the road shortly after you start down the back side of Murphy Hill. As I crested the rise out in the distance, I saw what I thought at the time was a deer on the left shoulder of the road about 200 yards out from me. I slowed down to 40 miles per hour or so because I didn't want it to jump in front of me or if there were other deer in the area I might spook them into the road. As I got within 75 yards, the object began to move across the road from left to right. That is when I saw that it was not a deer and I thought it might be a bear, which I have seen cross a road before, but this was way different. The object was hunched over slightly and was on two legs and cleared the road in about four steps. The best way to describe the color was dark brown to black and I would guess the hair to be four or five inches. The arms looked to come down to mid-thigh area. I did not see the eyes except for there seemed to be a deer-like shine coming from the face area and the height to be about 7 feet plus as it disappeared over the edge of the road to the right. I was about 50 yards away by this time. I was starting to feel pretty weird like this was something I had never seen, hard to explain the feeling. As I passed the spot where it went over the bank, I tried to look over and see where it had gone. I was going about 25 miles per hour now as I went about 20 yards past the spot and stopped. I then reversed my car to the spot where I had seen it go over the bank. I stopped my car and left the engine running. I had my window rolled down slightly for airflow as I was driving when I stopped. I could smell a musty type smell not real bad but strong enough to notice. I could hear some movement in the brush but not a lot because of the car noise and the fact that my window was only down 2 or 3 inches on the left side when the object was now on my right. I had a really strong feeling that I was being watched. Every hair on my body was rigid. I had goose bumps over my whole body. I have them now as I write about this, not as bad but the chills. I decided then that it would be a really good time to leave so I drove off as fast as my metro would go. I made it to Lincoln City at 6 a.m. and had about 10 cars pass me going east on Highway 18 in that time. When I got there, I went to my girlfriend's to get my bag and was going to come right back to Portland to work. Instead, I stayed until 9 a.m. then left to go back to Portland. As I drove by the spot, I thought about stopping but decided against it. I know the area well though because I helped a lady who had rolled her car off the road in the same area many years ago. The bank in the area is about 7 feet down on both sides and is swampy in some places. I lived in Lincoln City for many years and have spent time in the woods alone and with others and have never felt or seen anything like this. I don't know what to make of it except for it being Bigfoot. No bear walks on its back legs like this. If you want to see the spot I can take you there, just let me know. Also, I drive this stretch of road two times, sometimes more, a week. Overall, I was left feeling uneasy and couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. It was an experience that I couldn't explain and still think about it to this day. I was probably 15 or late 14 at the time, midsummer time. Me and two of my friends left a girl's house late at night, basically sneaking out she lived deep kinda in the countryside about a 45 minute walk to get to the city line. We left about 2 in the morning me and my two friends we stepped out of her country subdivision road onto a main paved country road, we took a left onto the main road we look on our right you could basically see just road and woods each direction with some mailboxes but on the right side our opposite direction at the top or end of our view on the road we could see just a white light or reflector imagine. Obviously that wasn't on our mind our mind was not being caught by cops or anything out past curfew. We walked left the opposite direction. 
As walking cars occasionally drove by so to be safe we would hide in the woods or tree line every passing car just in case a cop. Every time we would watch a car go by our opposite traveling direction basically we would look back and the white object was getting closer quite fast. You could only see it in headlights once the headlights were gone it like was basically gone. We continued walking all seeing it just confused but didn't care to wait, we got to about the town line this thing was probably only like 200 to 500 feet behind us again could only see it in passing headlights none of the cars seemed to notice. When the creature was close enough it has translucent white skin with big black hole eyes, long limbs looked pretty skinny but still could have been anywhere between 6 to 8 maybe more feet. We get into the start of town with house subdivision streets, basically town homes. Every four-way we got to on our left looking a four-way our opposite block street over we could see the thing walking with our pace, when I got a side view of it, it I noticed its arms hung down pretty low it's like it was looking at us but wasn't. Me and my friends that night weren't on any drugs and snuck outside at night quite a bit so it wasn't just some fear or mistake. We were pretty I guess calm or casual because it kept distance, we were about in town and more worried about ourselves getting caught by the law. To this day I still ride my bike around town at night and have for years haven't seen anything at night like that since or before I sometimes guess if it was just my vision but both my friends saw it and definitely seen it three more times without headlights at opposite four ways. It was a grey kinda cloudy night any help what I might have saw? The date was January 10th, 2021. It was a cold night with a slight fog outside my hometown of Tunkhannock in northeast Pennsylvania. Many nights I like to take long walks in order to clear my mind from the busy day. I walked on the rural road by this large patch of woods not far from my home. On my right is an old building with two small wooden houses beside it. As I'm looking I notice movement. Then I see an 8 to 10 foot pale white figure briskly walk across the road from one of the houses to the woods about 50 feet from me. I know I saw something so I quickly continue forward. Whatever it was, I wanted nothing to do with it and I now wanted to get home as fast as possible. A minute or two later, I look up. Again, I see this pale figure that is now on all fours but still 5 feet tall at the shoulder. It is about 100 feet in the woods to the left of me. It had bleached white skin, a bald head, and huge black eyes. It had a human face and body except it looked extremely emaciated and its arms were like super long. It started to sway its body back and forth like a mantis. This is when I ran as fast as I could. I only looked back after I ran for a solid 5 minutes and I don't believe it had chased me. I was very close to home and I was concerned that this pale humanoid was lurking about so near to where I lived. I have no idea what I saw but I know that it was real, not an apparition. I know that you have written a book about these pale humanoids and I wonder if this may be what you described as a crawler? Thanks. I have a story of a creature on my hunting land from when I was a kid. When I was about 10 years old I was hunting with my grandfather, now deceased, on family-owned land near Covington, Minnesota. It was near dusk and we've been sitting for a couple hours now we haven't seen much just a spiker and a small doe nothing large enough to shoot, we were starting to lose hope and were getting ready to start the about one mile trek back to our cabin. As we were preparing to leave we heard some twigs cracking from our right rear side. The stand we were in was tucked in the rear corner of a large clearing on one of the bigger trees in the tree line. As the cracks from the twigs got closer I remember realizing that all other ambient noises stopped. When the creature finally emerged from the tree line I remember my heart feeling like it stopped working and an overwhelming feeling of dread wash over me. What I saw was what looked to be a small buck that looked like it hadn't eaten in weeks and was an extremely pale brown almost grey with what looked to be a broken neck and a missing antler stumble into the clearing. At this time the sun was just about to sink below the tree tops and cover the clearing with shadows, I recall looking over at my grandfather and seeing a level of fear I have never seen on his face before, 
Mind you my grandfather was tough and fearless as they come being he'd seen active duty in Vietnam as infantry. After seeing my grandfather's face it just made the feeling in my stomach become worse, as we watched this deer stumble into the clearing my grandfather reached for his binoculars, as he pulled them out the lens cover made a small noise on the side of the stand the creature must have heard it because it stopped its stumble, now in the middle of the clearing, and creepily rotated around and rose up on its hind legs and stared directly at us for about a minute before running off in an creepily awkward sprint into the woods, at this time it felt like I just had gotten the wind knocked out of me and I was petrified with fear. After the encounter me and my grandfather sat in the stand completely silent staring at the clearing trying to make sense of what we just witnessed. As we started to walk back we heard extremely weird almost human sounding noises coming from the woods around us, by the time we got back to the cabin my grandfather decided it'd be best to call our trip early and head back home. But before we left I had to use the bathroom and our cabin was quite old so I didn't have indoor plumbing just an old outhouse. As I sat down to use the toilet the immense feeling of dread returned as I heard human-like whispers and small scratches on the back of the outhouse. I screamed at the top of my lungs to my grandfather as I ran out of the outhouse crying. After that we drove back home and had a small discussion on what we saw. Despite being an avid hunter that was my grandfather's last season of hunting and about a year later we sold the land I've told this story a couple times to close friends and family but I think most of them think I'm crazy especially being the only witness now that my grandfather passed away. Still to this day the encounter sends shivers down my spine every time I think about it. Also I was very tired when typing this so please forgive me for any spelling errors. It was mid-November 2021 and me and about 10 friends were camping in the woods in the Sawtooth National Forest near Petit Lake. There were two groups of four people in two tents and one in a car and me and my buddy were in hammocks near the edge of the camp. It's about 1 am and we all had been sleeping for about two hours. I wake up to my hammock mate panting extremely heavily and yelling my name. I am confused and get up and help him. He is paralyzed by fear he said that he had an extremely vivid dream that there was a black figure tall and slender trying to break into his car after he had seen this figure decapitate me and the rest of his friends. He said that he woke up to the figure near the car and saw all of our heads stuck on sticks throughout the camp. He proceeded, he said to click the car alarm button and the figure began to run circles around the car and the stop then dashed off extremely quickly into the woods. I was obviously freaked out at this point and I immediately felt very uneasy. But I told him it was just a bad dream and that he needs to go back to sleep. Him and I tried for about 5 minutes both stricken with fear at this point when we hear our friend in the tent begin to yell, no, no, don't take me. Side note, we had not awoken anyone else in the camp at this point. This freaked me and my buddy out quite a bit because we had no idea what was going on. We were also very vulnerable in our hammock by ourselves on the edge of our about 50 yard across camp. Our buddy's yells presede to wake up most of the rest of the camp. And we find out that our friend in the car that my buddy said clicked the car alarm of was awake. So all of us scared and awake have a conversation about what is going on and the buddy in the car says that he heard scratching on the window and heard something pull the door. He also said that he had seen the black figure running around the car as well. We were all freaked at this point and decided to move into the same tent. Our friend with the dream also claimed a similar murder story to the friend in the hammock. The next morning we all talked and so many of us experienced what happened that night 6 in total that we determined that it must have been some sort of being that was giving us nightmares. We called it a windigo but we have no idea. Also, we had friends that stayed at the same site about six months earlier and a few of them did notice weird things happening at camp at night like feelings of being watched or feeling of a being walking around their tent. Strange stuff in the Idaho mountains. What does this sound like and what do you all think? This happened a couple months ago and I didn't think anything strange of it at the time but after talking to multiple people including my father, I'm not very confident in what I saw anymore and I'm looking for some help. 
So I worked third shift at UPS, Richwood, Kentucky. I was driving a buddy of mine home a couple miles out, and had just started driving home. I was in the Beech Grove area near some apartment buildings on a back road, when about 30 to 40 feet in front of my car I watched a creature dash across the road. I stopped my car to look at it, it stopped in someone's yard, turned back at me and made eye contact with me for about 10 seconds. I went to take a picture and it ran. At first I thought it was the first fox I had ever seen, but after some research online it looks nothing like foxes native to Kentucky. This fox was about three and a half feet tall, very slender with long skinny legs. It didn't look malnourished though, it looked very healthy. Solid black eyes with pointy diagonal ears that were tipped black, with the lower half of its legs being black, and the tip of its tail being black. It was about 4 a.m. and perch black outside, but there were plenty of porch and street lights for me to see it. It was also decently foggy that night. The only species of fox I found online that looks like it is one that's native to Africa, and extinct. Since this encounter almost two years ago, I've seen three other wild foxes in the area. Two were as described by Google, much smaller than the one I saw. The third one I saw was about five minutes out from my house and it looked just like the massive fox but slightly shorter. A friend of mine brought up the idea of it being a skinwalker, so I thought I'd post this here to get thoughts from anyone that would have any kind of idea for me, since I've heard stories of skinwalkers being in Kentucky. I live a suburban townhouse neighborhood in Pennsylvania with woods surrounding it. I hear screeches a lot during the summer and fall due to foxes. So it's not unnormal for me to hear them. But what's weird about this encounter is it's the middle of winter and foxes usually aren't out. I live in the basement of my house with a back door and light for outside. Tonight on January 8th just past 12 am I heard a baby scream. Like I said it's not uncommon due to the foxes but this sounded like an actual baby. So I unlock my back door and turn on the light. I heard another screech but this one was different it sounded deeper. So like I usually do I whistled. It responded with another screech. I'm still assuming it's a fox at this point but I'm always interested to see if it could be something else. I whistled again but it didn't make a screech, instead I heard a whistle back. Now I'm a little freaked out at this point. I whistled again and it whistled back. After a couple more whistles and screeches I don't hear for a couple minutes so I shut my back door lock it and turn of the light. As I am currently writing this I hear it again and open my door and turn the light back on. Just a a minute ago it sounded like PPL talking in the distance. I want to finish writing this before I listen again. So I need you guys genuine opinion. What could this be? Is it a fox? Is it a skinwalker? Or is it a something else? It's currently 1227 and I still hear the screeches. Let me know. So I want to first preface that I don't know much about skinwalkers and other creatures of similar nature. I recently started learning of their potential, existence so feel I'm willing to learn and be educated on the topic. There's this park my girlfriend and I go to to smoke a lot, and we've encountered the same dog-like thing multiple times, it's always nighttime when we go. It looks like a really huge black dog with round bear-like ears and yellowish eyes. The first few times we saw it we didn't think much of it, but it kept just like spawning in? It never made a sound and always just stared at us and followed us around creepily. We've encountered it while high and while sober on multiple occasions that we stopped going to that park entirely. We would be walking from the parking lot to the park and we'll just see the thing emerge from behind a tree and follow us and try to block our path back to the car. We had to run and jump a fence just to get away from it once too. We've never had a single insanely creepy interaction. Besides the time we were at the deepest corner of the park bordering a small forest and had to jump two fences to avoid the thing. I have a theory it could be a stray, but it really did not act like a dog at all. It didn't really even feel alive. It felt like it was just monitoring us for some reason but it was really eerie.
This happened around 2008 to 2009 and I am just now telling the story. I am 56 years old now. I have told two people about this. I was on Telegraph Road, heading south towards Toledo, Ohio. I had just picked up my brother in LaSalle, Michigan. He is two years younger than me. I was driving and he was in the passenger seat. We had just passed a horse farm and then there was a stretch of wooded area. Not thick woods, just quite a few trees. I was driving 55 miles per hour. Then something to the right of me caught my eye. I looked over to see my brother with a stunned look on his face staring out at this thing also. There was this thing in the woods, flying and keeping pace with us. My very first thought was it was a man with a jetpack flying. Then I realized it had wings. This thing was probably 7 to 8 feet long and had huge wings. It was black in color. It was almost racing us, it seemed. It then turned its head and looked at us. Big red eyes. My brother and looked at each other. We didn't say anything for a few seconds. One of us said, did you see that? And we both said, WTF was that? We looked back over and it was gone. I slowed down a bit and we kept looking but didn't see it. Just today, I text my brother and asked if he remembered this. He said yes, it haunts him and he doesn't tell anyone because they would call him crazy. That's how I feel. I have tried not thinking about it, telling myself it was a turkey vulture, it definitely was not, and other things. If my brother would have said no, I wouldn't be writing this. I am well respected in my community. I am an ordinance officer and my daughter is a sheriff's deputy. Thank you for letting me tell my story finally. It is quite a relief. I was hunting deer and bear with two buddies of mine. It was the second weekend out high cascade deer season. We shot a bear just before dark and could not find it. The clear cut was very brushy and beginning to get very grown over. We decided to go to the pickup drive to the top of the hill 200 yards or so pull over and back into a wide spot to spend the night. My buddy slept just behind my truck and I slept in the canopy with the tailgate and canopy door open. Sometime in night near midnight give or take an hour on either side I was awakened by very loud footsteps when I sat up to look outside. The moon was so bright one could read by it I saw no one. This is a very remote area we saw no campsites nearby so I was surprised to hear someone walking down the road. I rolled over to see if the guys were still there. They were in both asleep. The footsteps were loud and fast I should have been able to see the person because it sounded so close. I then realized he had to be extremely heavy. I was about to roll over to sit up and look out again when it stopped. It had come around corner and saw the truck and stopped. I was afraid to move Swad just lay silently and listened. Then I heard light footfalls, it was sneaking up on us. It snuck up to the font of truck. Then I could hear it slowly work its way to the back. My head was out on the tailgate if I tuned my head up and back I would have been able to see it but I was too afraid to move. It then went back around the front of the truck and stopped for a few moments. I thought it would leave then. I knew this was not a four-legged animal. I've heard deer and elk as well as other animals on gravel roads and this was defiantly bipedal. Now it began to snake down the other side of the truck to e back and stand just above and behind me. This time I tried to look but it was just too close to far back to see without turning my head and body and I was unwilling to do that. This time I could slightly hear it breathing. Then it sneaked back to the road waited there for for am I nude or two then loud and FST down the road it went. We were parked on a long curve so when I finally looked out it had just gone out of sight. I was awakened later when a deer came up to our spot and it was very d for n. It snorted at us then crashed down through the brush. The next day I asked the guys if Ty heard anything. They said they heard the deer. I didn't tell them about the footsteps. I looked for evidence but found nothing clear enough. We found the bear packed it out and I haven't gone back. I may have stumbled onto a print by pure accident, while hiking with my niece and nephew in the Shisla National Forest, west of Dallas, 
Oregon. I will give details of the location later, as not to saturate the site with the public, so I can finish my investigation in the area and get more readings and data. GPS, photos, and history on the area. Here is what I have thus far. On the mid-afternoon of 24th of July, I took my niece age 13, and nephew age 16 to an area I used to hunt and log about 30 years ago west of Dallas, Oregon. 30 years has changed the area quite a bit as Weyerhaeuser has bought up a lot of the land, Boise and Hampton Company as most of the area is logged out, there is still a large standing area of some old growth and an area in which to hike in. We were not 15 minutes out from my truck on a trail and my nephew blurted out. Uncle Ron, look at this footprint. Off the trail a foot or two, was a large print made in dried mud, the last rain in the area was about July 6, 2003, so the print was well defined and clear as the photo shows. Several things I noticed about the print, 1. It was not a boot print as no boot tracks were showing, the print was smooth, consistent with a bare foot print. 2. The width was about 9 inches wide at the largest width, and about 14 inches long. 3. Toe contours could clearly be seen, but it looks like whatever made he print, may have stepped on a trig, wood, so not all the toes made an imprint in the mud, as the casting shows. 4. The footprint clearly shows a heel print, and arch in the foot, the edge of the foot at wide proportions from a very heavy individual. 5. As the trail is used lightly by mountain bikers and horses, as seen by tracks on the trail. Our five hours up on the trail, I only saw one mountain biker that day while in the area. So, it is not used that much, maybe only by locals who live in Dallas or people who know the area. I attempted to make GPS readings that day, but for some reason, my GPS could not pick up satellite signals possibly from the heavy canopy of trees. Another attempt for a long slash lot reading with negative results on a second trip. I will attempt a third trip with new batteries and see what happens. The print was as I said left of the trail, going SSW. I searched the area for about 2 hours, hair samples on trees, scat, or other prints in area. Negative results. Photos of area were taken from different perspective points. At this point, as I don't want to contaminate the area with undue traffic, I will keep the exact location confidential until I complete my investigation. Now a little history on the area. I have hunted the Falls City and Dallas area since 1970. In 1972, while heading to Falls City, Oregon. My friend Rick swerved to miss something darting across the road. I was a witness to something large, tall and running on two legs, not four. Thinking it may have been a bear, or a crazed hunter dressed in black. We both, as teenagers could not answer what we saw. The stories we had heard is, that the Dallas and Falls City area from old timers, and hunter friends of ours, stories of Bigfoot circulated during that time. Especially after the famous Red Bluff, California film clip of the famous Roger Patterson from 1967. As the photo shows I took a casting of the footprint, as mentioned, only one was found thus far. Within the next few days I will attempt to return to the area for further investigation and findings. We'll keep you posted. My wife's sister and their family had just moved into a new home in a new rural subdivision near Chevelin Park by Tamalo Creek in Bend. She had mentioned there were coyotes that made a horrible sounding noise sometimes at night, they opened their windows at night on the second story level. Me and my family were spending the night there and I awoke to hear a dreadful sounding repetitive call. Having grown up in the backwoods country of East Texas, I am familiar with the yapping cries of coyotes and this sound was not from any animal I'm familiar with. The best way to describe the sound is that of a large bloodhound trying to clear its throat woe loudly with no pitch or volume variances. It occurred in two separate periods and the calls were about five or six repetitons, two seconds in length with about a one second gap in between them. Once the sounds ended, there was an eerie silence for about five or six minutes, 
even though there are several dogs in the neighborhood. On October 22, 2003 I was driving home with my younger brother and my friend. My brother was asleep in the back of my car, and my friend was sitting in the passenger seat next to me. We were driving along, and we always keep both on eyes on the road. She spotted some eyes on the road, and called out deer. I slowed down, because it's well known that deer are a bit crazy, and do jump out in front of cars. The thing about this experience was that it was quite odd. The animal was moving at an incredible speed, about the rate of a car going 5 to 10 miles per hour. We figured that if it was a deer, then it would be moving up and down, because they gallop, or jump, when moving at fast rates. This animal was moving at a steady rate, not moving up or down, there was also an odd smell in the air, much like a mix between rotting timber and dead animal. Another thing about the night was that it was decently lit by the moonlight. And I had my bright lights on. If it had been a deer or elk, I would have seen the light brown fur that they have, or a rack of antlers. None of these variables were present. Only a dark figure, and a set of eyes. I don't know what to make of this. But I thought coming here and asking for your guy's opinion on this would help because I'm honestly terrified. I'm not giving any names because I don't know if it was a skinwalker or not. I'll keep this as short as possible because I'm at work right now and don't have a lot of time. So four days ago I went to a bonfire with a couple of my co-workers. It wasn't huge, just a small get-together with about seven people there. I knew everyone there and for the first hour it was super fun. Now this place was out in the woods, barely got any reception. We were about a mile away from civilization, so if anything were to happen it would be pretty hard to get help. I live in Utah too, and Therese not a lot of traffic around where I live so there wouldn't be many cars. There was only one person there I didn't know, but I just assumed he was one of my co-workers friends so I didn't think anything of it. He was a tall skinny white dude, had black hair and blue eyes, now I don't want to be that guy but he was also pretty ugly. He was very distant, barely talked and kept to himself, which at first I didn't find odd. As this thing went along, I noticed he would stare at people for random every now and then, and this was when he felt a little off to me. Before asking anyone who he was, I started to observe him. His movements were very, odd. I don't know how to explain, but the way he moved was very strange, he walked super strangly and moved his head and neck weirdly. This made me paranoid and ask all my co-workers if they know him. One by one I asked and each person said no, all saying they thought he was someone else's friends. This was it for me, something told me to get out of there now. I went to all of my co-workers and told them everything and they all agreed to leave and go to another co-workers of mine home. We all packed our stuff up and loaded it into the car, acting like we were done for the night. He didn't get into any car, he just stood near the woods and waved goodbye. As we drove off, I was with my colleague and when we looked back, he was gone. It was an instant too, but that's not the only scary thing. My car window was recently broken so I didn't have a window up, so I could hear everything outside basically. On our way to my place, Every now and then I would hear something that sounded like someone screaming, and I swear that one time someone called my name. This just made me super scared, and instead of joking about the situation me and my friend were terrified. We kept hearing these noises, whines, a dog barking, a horse, someone screaming, people calling my name, and wolves howling. Something in me told me that something was making these noises to lure me into the woods, and luckily it didn't lure any of my friends into it. As we were leaving the gravel road and moving on to the main road, we looked back into the woods. I was behind all the other cars so I got a very good view of something, I don't know what, running way faster than any human should run across the gravel road. It was tall, skinny, and it looked really pale. I booked it at that point, driving past all of other co-workers' cars. My friend in the passenger seat asked what was wrong, I couldn't speak though, 
It was like I was so terrified I just wasn't paying attention. I just drove and I almost drove into the woods at one point, I only snapped out of it when one of my friends called asking what the hell was wrong and what happened. I lied and told him everything was fine, he didn't believe me though and kept pushing but I kept lying. He eventually gave up and told me he would see me at my house. This made me terrified to go near any woods, and even scared to leave my house at some points. I'm terrified, and I think if my instincts wouldn't have kicked in and told me to leave then I truly believe someone at that bonfire would have died. Took my research team up to Odal Lake for a trial run with them. Found several trees that have been twisted and snapped, fresh green, 9 feet area, several logs been torn apart looking for termites no doubt, but no visible claw marks like a bear's. Heard young boyfriend calling for mama I think, no more than 50 yards from us. Had new bees that got scared and left before mama kicked our butts. We'll be going down to a hunting area Myrtle Beach area, my witness hunted there since child with grandpa, buddies and him scared off by four individual screamers. One scream shook the car's windows. They left and never went back. We'll report back if I find anything good. I want to preface this by saying I know what I saw wasn't a skinwalker, but this is the most helpful supernatural threat I've seen. I've scoured multiple places on the internet and I still haven't figured out what I saw. The door to my bathroom is at the end of my hallway so there's no possible way someone could have walked by, looked in and then walked away coming from the right of the door. Anyway, I was in the bath and all the lights were off save for the candle I had lit on the counter. I happened to look back down the hall and in the right hand corner a pale white, bald being looking at me. It had to be at least 9 feet tall because my ceiling is 8 feet and it looked hunched over and was staring at me with its neck bent almost upside down. It looked kinda like Voldemort from Harry Potter but tall and skinny. It was obviously gone when I looked back but I haven't been able to figure out what it was. My partner suggested it was just a 9 feet tall ghost, ha ha but I don't think so. Any help or what direction to look in would be appreciated. I work night shift. Three days ago I came home, took my shower, and was sitting on the couch. I had a box fan in the downstairs window blowing cold air in. I live by an old cemetery in a small village next to a national park. I first thiff something was wrong when the cats in the house were panic walking back and forth by the wall that's facing the cemetery. I watched them for a minute and I heard what sounded like crying coming from the cemetery area and a soft help me. I sat there and listened and heard it again a minute later. I quickly took the fan out of the window and closed and locked it and made everything else was locked. The past few days since then I've been feeling like I'm being watched. When I got home yesterday why ears were ringing the loudest I've ever heard it and I heard a soft sob again. I waited in my vehicle for 5 minutes then walked to the door that's 10 feet away. When I was opening the door I thought saw something out of the corner of my eye so I hurried up and closed the door behind me quickly and locked it. Once I was inside the ringing immediately went away but my cats were moving in a panicked manner again. I didn't know until recently that you aren't supposed to say the names out loud as it draws their attention as does whistling at night. This is in Northeast Ohio. Thought? This is a very short story but I really need to get it out there. I was driving through a narrow road at around 2 in the morning. This was after I finished my late shift as I work at a hospital and a car crash happened and was in need of immediate surgery, ok now back to the road. This road was surrounded by trees and I was used to hearing crickets but this time it was extremely quiet. My immediate thought was a skinwalker because I love spooky stories, but I told myself to stop being ridiculous as I was scaring myself. All of a sudden a terrible smell hit me and I closed all the windows to help with the smell what was before me. 
At this point alls I could think of was Skinwalker but I tried to make sense of this and accept it was probably a dead deer or moose creating the odor. This next part happens very fast so be ready. As I was going down the road a hunched wolf was sitting right in front of my headlight, my heart skipped 5 beats then I remembered all the stories I read. One of my favorites was from Entropic Society and knew this was not a wolf because it was huge. Its legged looked like they were smashed by boulders and reattached, it head snapped to me on one side and it head was tilted to its right. The thing what made me know is when it stared into my soul as it stood up to be 8 feet tall, its yellow eyes and a human hand slowly crept towards me. I drove to right into that thing and knocked it down barely with gave me enough time to go through that tiny gap the giant monster left. As I made it through the gap my wing mirrors collapsed in because of how narrow it was. Okay this bit makes me tremble as I write it down. It started to run faster than my car I tried to go full throttle but from ramming into the skinwalker messed up my front part of the car. I was so close to the city I could see the street lights and a few drunkies beside trash. At the last moment it gripped onto the back of my car and it nails penetrated the roof of my ceiling. Now I was just leaving the forest when it jumped off and stared at me through the mirror inside of the car. I made it home and just didn't speak to my brother or my sister and went to sleep. The next morning I told this to my brother who guaranteed I saw a skinwalker, this happened at 4 months ago and now I take a route which adds 20 minutes to my drive but it's better than that cursed route. Last night I had a dream about a skinwalker. I know what a skinwalker is, what it looks like, and some of the legends and stories. I am native Alaskan and we have a similar story about the Kushdaka. But in this dream, I am certain it was a skinwalker. In the dream, I'm trying to put my almost two-year-old daughter to sleep. The room is dark with a window on the opposite wall from where we are laying. The light switches within arm's reach. My daughter is very restless and asking me to turn on the light. She's tossing and turning and crawling all over me, as toddlers do. But as the dream progresses she's more and more insistent that I turn on the light. She begins to throw herself into a tantrum, so finally I turn on the light while still laying in bed. I immediately notice something outside the window and there it is. Right outside the window, it had the face and fur of a coyote but its legs were way too long. Its paws had long protruding claws and it was standing on its hind legs. In its mouth, and his front two claws, it held a half-eaten human baby. I began to screaming in the dream and woke up screaming as well. When I opened my eyes and began to wake up, I couldn't move my body for several minutes. The reason why I think this could be a bad omen, or even a death omen, is because I am 10 weeks pregnant. The pregnancy is going well so far but I have never had a dream that has been that vivid or that has scared me that much. I feel that it was a very clear message. But I would like some other opinions. What does it mean? Very early morning woke up to a loud walking noise in the gravel outside my house. I looked towards the window and noticed that the sensor light turned on. I walked up to the window and I looked out and saw a large shadowy figure walking across the road. It looked to be around 6 or 7 feet in height. Later the next morning I heard branches falling. It was terrifying, because as I heard the branches falling I heard this high-pitched squeal that was very frightening. It also appeared as if there were more than one of these creatures. My sister and I were on our way to Kalamath Falls. We were just on the west side of Oak Ridge on Highway 97 and all of a sudden two cars in front of us stop, and this large, hairy thing over 7 feet tall lumbered on hind legs across the highway. From the north side to the south side. It was moving quite quickly and disappeared into the woods of the south side of the road. I used to work on Vandenberg Air Force Base in Central California, my office was on top of the mountain that was ceremonial Chumash land. 
Whenever ground was broken we had to have a religious leader come out and bless the ground first. It's usually pretty foggy about halfway up the mountain and I got used to driving it every day but you have to keep an eye out for deer, mountain lions, bears, all sorts of wildlife. One night at about 11 pm I was driving down the mountain and had just gotten to the point that the fog was gone, in front of me was clear and behind was just a wall of fog. As I got to a sharp turn I saw what I thought was a large coyote in the road so I slammed on my brakes. It looked like it had no fur and was covered in pale leathery skin with a dog-like head. As I looked at it it rose up on its hind legs, it was hunched over at maybe 6 feet tall but if it was standing straight I'd guess 7 feet. It turned and looked right at me and slowly walked off the road into the brush. At the time I was doing a class about Native Americans for my degree and was in touch with Chumash members for my project, I asked them if they knew anything about it and they simply said we don't talk about that. To this day I'm 100% sure I saw a skinwalker that night. My friend first came across the prince while walking through the sage hunting rabbits. It's a high desert area with no visible trees for miles. It is 15 plus miles to nearest residence which is the Simplot cattle ranch. We observed several large tracks made by one creature. The track had a very large big toe and three other toes on each foot. We did not back track but followed the prince for several yards. We then went back to hunting. The tracks continued on. So this happened last year, and almost every year I go to Palatka and go to a place called the Badlands, it's a giant tree farm that his family owns but in general it's in the woods. So one day we were hanging at the angel tree which is just a nice giant beautiful tree and we heard a turkey because it's the wild. So my friend Andrew made the joke of saying how you never know when you'll have to shank a turkey. Either way we went to go check it out, after we got like 5 feet onto the trail the noises from the turkey stop. Then I hear to my left while Andrew heard it to his right, we hear footstep now of course you could have said how there's deer and other wild like which there is, but it sounded like human footsteps, like you know the distinct noise of bare feet? That's what it sounded like. The second we heard that we ran to the ATV and went back to the house. I looked up if there is Navajo grounds in Florida and I kind of found something I think but the articles were all over the place. Ever since then we haven't heard it again since, but we don't feel that safe going out in those woods anymore especially at night. Now again I know this is a skinwalker subreddit but I don't know if this was a skinwalker or a wendigo or anything at all. I wanted to share something I experienced in 2018 which, after reading some of the descriptions here, made me think posting would be a good idea. Maybe someone can comment on whether this fits the profile or not. This happened in Urbana, Illinois during spring 2018 around 8 pm I was driving an SUV through a residential area, 30 miles per hour, with moderate street lighting. I was coming back home from grocery shopping and turned a corner into the usual street. After driving one block, I saw something similar to a large, white silver dog figure suddenly run towards the right front wheel of my vehicle. I gauged its size to be substantially larger than that of a German Shepherd, with an unusually bright hide. I braked quickly in fear of having run over it. Within seconds, I got off the car and performed a quick check. No signs of any injured animal, no nearby rustling into an unkempt garden next to where it all happened, no animal crossing the road. This took less than 5 seconds. Then I paused and saw the same figure 2 blocks away from where I was, looking at me intensely for about 30 seconds. I looked back to the tire in my vehicle an instant, and it was suddenly gone when I checked again. All happened in less than a minute. After this, I drove around several blocks without signs of any dog or similar animal nearby for about 10 minutes. Estimating the distance and time between events, I am certain that it is not feasible for a dog, much less such a large one, to run that quickly that distance, particularly without seeing it under street lighting. Comments are welcome.
Alright, so let me first begin by telling my place, I am from northeast of India, very quiet and lovely, full of nature and very distant from the eccentric part of India. And the creature in my story is called Kimbu Keoiba, in my tribe's language it means half man, half tiger or like man, like tiger, to be precise. Quite similar to the skinwalker A. Eh? Anyway, my tribe is actually the Maitai tribe of the state of Manipur. There are several states in the northeastern India, with multiple tribes in each state. They might or might not have this mythological creature in their folklore but this story is one of the famous one in our tribe among others. The exact famous one is about the story about this creature, Kimbu Keoiba with the seven brothers and one sister. If you guys want to hear this story, let me know in the comments, I'd be happy to share the story or in fact share you an animated YouTube video about the said story, some guy from our state created. It's exactly how it has been told to us when we were kids. And it's very eerily similar to the Navajo legend, although the creature, in our story is just one guy slash creature instead multiple creatures who was a famous medicine man or Oja who discovered he could conjure some dark magic to convert himself to a tiger or this vile animal and could convert back to his human form. Also I've heard I don't know if it's true but people in Thailand, Myanmar and few other Southeast Asian countries apparently knows about this story but in their own different twist. But it does make sense, Cause in our story it ends with the creature running away slash chased away to the south of our state and it's quite likely it found a new home in those countries. But now that I know that skinwalkers in the west existed or exists, well debatable by most I guess, I think my story now gives a whole new perspective to its existence and its widespread activity it had around the world. Or it's a common dark magic among the planets which end which is world. When I was around 10 or 12, roughly 12 years ago, me and my grandma and uncle went to Jasper in Canada, given how I was born in Canada itself, nothing weirded me out when it came to the woods and nature as a whole. I've seen and heard deer before and a whole slew of animals. I don't remember much from the trip other than a bits and pieces, but what I do remember was arriving at the hotel and climbing up the steps to the second floor. The hotel had a parking lot in front before the road. I remember waking up one morning in the hotel while my grandma and uncle were still asleep and walking over to the window to peer out from behind the blinds to see a fox standing in the middle of a road. It looked like it had been run over given how oddly it was shaped. Concerned for its safety I wanted to wake up my grandma or simply run out there to check on it. I felt my stomach sink when it turned to face at me. Its head looked bruised and mishappen. Which I would have ruled out as it having been run over had it not stood on its hind legs. I turned my head away from the window and yelled for my grandma to wake up, who slept in her bed just a couple feet away before I looked back and saw it walk on those hind legs to the side where the building hid my view from the rest of the road. I looked completely insane when my grandma moved me aside and saw nothing on the road even going as far as to open the door and peer down both both ends of the walkway. Nothing. Regardless, I can say with confidence I'm not going back to Jasper. When I was about 10, my family wanted to drive cross-country through the southwest, visiting places throughout Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. We stopped for the night at a cheap cabin, I don't remember the exact location, but I remember it being somewhere between Alamogordo and Roswell. The area around it was very densely wooded, and it was about 20 minutes from a small gas station where we got food for the night. It was a two-bedroom cabin with a living room, and my parents took the big room, my younger sister got the other bedroom, and I was on the pull-out couch. The couch was placed directly next to a large window, looking out at a creek leading into the woods. Day went by, and everyone went to sleep. I woke up around 2 in the morning to a knocking on the window. I was facing away from it, and was too scared shitless to turn around. It wasn't a random knocking either. It was rhythmic, like a waltz with long pauses. 1, 2, 3.1, 2, 3. Too terrified to move, 
I lied there, trying not to make noise, until whatever was out there started to make a quiet, shrill, high-pitched whistle. When I heard that, I started screaming for my father, and the knocking abruptly stopped, and my dad ran into the room. He's not a superstitious man, and says to this day that he didn't see anything, but according to him, the sense of malaise that hit him was unlike anything he ever felt before. He got my sister, and we all slept together in the big bedroom. The next day, I looked at the ground outside the window, and saw large deer tracks leading directly up to it. We have did similar trips until I moved out, but my dad refused to go back to that area. So this is a story from my brother, as such I have no way of validating that this happened at all except one part that I'll get to later. So back in 2015 my brother worked for a security guard hiring place, not exactly sure what to call it. Basically he'd call and they'd station him some place or another that needed it. So this particular time my brother got hired by the local cemetery, they'd had issues with kids sneaking in at night and messing things up and at one point, they even broke a couple graves. Anyways, his job was just to drive around the cemetery and make sure no one was messing around. This area was pretty rural and at the time, had a pretty bad stray dog problem. Dogs would get lost or people would drop them and they'd form packs and roam the countryside. On this particular night, my brother was at the cemetery and noticed a pretty big pack of dogs, about eight or so just wandering around and playing. There was a big Rottweiler, important later, a couple of mixed breed dogs and even a little Bichon Frise that was clearly someone's pet at some point because it still had a harness on. Also important later. So my brother is doing his rounds, which, like I said, was basically to drive from one end of the cemetery to the other with a spotlight and make sure no kids were breaking things or banging in one of the mausoleums or something. He's driving real slow and has the window down, his arm out the window with the spotlight and it's pitch black at this point. Suddenly he hears the dogs going crazy and then he hears, what he best described as a sound that sounded like that screaming bird from the swamp episode of Avatar The Last Airbender cartoon but deeper and more human with a rattling sound mixed in kind like a rattlesnake's rattle. The dogs go silent before starting back up barking and snarling a few minutes later. Then something fast and pale runs in front of his headlights with the eight dogs in pursuit, barking and snarling. So he decides to follow the dogs in fear that they're getting ready to tear someone's pet to pieces. He parks his car, gets out with his spotlight, then follows the sound of barking before he hears that scream again and swears that he heard a faint hail mixed in with the weird screech and rattling. He gets to where the dogs are going nuts and shines his light at the spot and is surprised to see that the dogs have a deer backed up against the wall of a mausoleum. He said that this deer was a pale grey color, it was skinny and emaciated and then he shines the light on its eyes, they're black, he says, but no light reflects from them and no shine either, they look like the eyes of something dead. He is understandably confused and he's standing there, a few yards away from a pack of angry snarling dogs that haven't even registered that he's there. The dogs have this deer surrounded and are taking turn nipping at his hind end and legs but my brother notices that every time they do, they recoil and sort of gag, as if the taste is appalling to them. My brother then hears a deep growling from behind him and this big Rottweiler bowls past him, launches itself at this deer, grabs its hind leg and with a mighty shake, knocks the thing over and just starts wailing on it and then he says the deer lets out that screech again, it then takes its hoof and swipes, yes he said swipes, at the dog, the dog lets go and the thing takes off, dog's heart on its heels. He never did guard work at that cemetery again but he did go back a few days later and managed to get the little Bichon for Zay to come to him, he's had that dog for the last five years. Hello Den of Misfits. About two months ago my wife, son, and I moved to northern Alabama. We're in a rural area surrounded by many cattle and hearse fields. A couple times per week right around 1.30 to 2 a.m. our two large dogs will go absolutely ballistic and bark slash growl at the front door, 
But nothing is outside. Our ring camera hasn't really caught anything. Recently, I've been having weird dreams, alien encounters, coyote invasions, etc. I don't say anything to my wife or son about these dreams, but every time I have them my son tells us about his dreams. The night I had a dream that aliens were hovering around our house in a UFO trying to abduct us he had a dream about aliens. The night I had a dream about coyotes being in the cattle field attacking our cats he had a dream about coyotes too. There's been nothing said slash done during the day related to aliens or coyotes. Do you have any idea of any creatures in northern Alabama that would cause this? Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.